What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we are talking about New World. And in this recent blog post, they discuss items in the game. Things ranging from potions, to weapon coatings, to food. But the main thing I wanted to talk about was their equipment reveal. Now, gear and loot in MMORPGs is a make or break thing, right? It either works or it doesn't work. So for New World to be a success, their gear system needs to bring the heat. It needs to be competitive with other MMOs out there. It needs to be interesting, possess a balanced procurement cycle, and be impactful. And what I mean by procurement cycle is how frequently does gear drop and how long does it take to find the piece of gear that you need or want. Because if the game dishes out high-end gear at a fast pace, then you're going to be geared so quick, you won't have anything to chase down, you'll have accomplished most of everything outside of content. On the other hand, if a game is way too stingy with gear, then people give up because they're tired of grinding, they never get what they want, and they're tired of feeling let down. So how does New World handle these things? To get us kicked off, let's talk rarities. So they will be following the traditional colors. Gear in New World will come in the common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary qualities. I'm really happy they decided to go the traditional route here because these colors are such a standard that it makes it easy to quickly identify rarities for new and veteran players alike. Now, each rarity comes with a set number of perks. Common has none, Epic has three, with Uncommon and Rare having one and two respectively. So you progressively gain perks as your gear becomes more rare, as it should. The perks on gear are also randomly rolled from a pool. So there is some RNG here on what actually comes on your piece of gear. There are some exceptions to this though, so for instance, a Legendary. These are actually curated, they have set perks, they have set gear score, so the Soulforged Blight Warhammer will always be the Soulforged Blight Warhammer. It's going to be the same every single time, so you can expect when you get that Legendary, you shouldn't get them very often, but if you get another one of those Legendaries, it's going to be the exact same. Go ahead and scrap it. Now, speaking of gear score, armor and weapons will feature a score that dictates how powerful an item is. The higher the score, the more damage the weapon dishes out, or the more protection a piece of armor will give you. In addition to the perks and the gear score, weapons and armor will also have gem slots. Now these slots are empty when the item drops and players with high enough jewel crafting can actually socket a gem in there. Once you put a gem in a piece of gear, it can't be removed. It can be swapped out, but never removed. Moving into legendary, I spoke briefly about these before, but I wanted to dive into these a little bit more. Legendary and named items are out in the world, right? They're out there typically found behind like the hardcore content, right? As they should be, they're legendary pieces of gear. But they also mentioned there are some legendary items for players of any level. Now this is something I really like. I like when games give low level players a chance at that like, oh my God moment, right? Where you lose your mind because a legendary dropped or something very rare dropped and it completely changes the way you play. It's that incentive. It's that kind of like adrenaline moment when you get something, it's just, it's great. However, like I mentioned, Legendary items are curated. They have fixed perks. They have fixed gear scores. So you can't really do anything to them outside of a gym slot if it has one. So I talked about the Soul Forged Blight. So it has some flavor text at the top, a fixed 625 gear score, 1304 total damage. Then it has some perks for like void damage absorb, increased void damage, increased base damage. So really this thing is just straight up DPS, bringing the heat, pushing out damage. Now what I really want to see them do is experiment with the effects on these legendary weapons, right? Something like having extra damage and perks like we see on the Soulforged Blight are great, but I want to see that hammer do something different. Like when you go out and you just start wiping out things, you start killing enemies, I want to see it do something like store souls, right? Like store souls of the enemies that it's been killed, then perform an AoE explosion or maybe an AoE heal, like a Necromancer style thing. And it's simple. But taking some creative approaches to these high-end items are going to be key for giving players gear to chase after. Because right now, I see this legendary item, Soul Forge Blight, this nice hammer, and I don't get excited for it. Because all it is is, okay, I'm going to deal some extra void damage, some extra base damage, and I have an absorb. Sure, it might be effective. It might be something where it's like, man, this thing just wipes the floor with everything. But it's not fun to use. It's not you know, exciting to use. It's not flashy to use. It's just straight up stat stick and that's it. So really I'm just saying be creative with legendary named items, right? You have one opportunity, one first impression for these type of things. And if people see named items and like the top end gear isn't worth chasing after, then why the hell would they want to chase after anything beneath those? 
It's poor incentive and really doesn't get the job done. Now, beyond armor and weapons, they also showcased rings and amulets, which are called trinkets. And they also showed bags, which increase your carry weight. Very simple. Now, trinkets give passive bonuses to your core attributes, things like constitution. They grant other bonuses to like life leech, crit strike damage, durability. And apparently, they all come with a pre socketed gem that cannot be replaced, which also sounds like RNG. So, finding the right gem on the right trinket will be key for your builds. So, all in all, it sounds like New World has a good foundation for their armor, their weapons, and their trinkets. I think overall, you know, this is a good thing to build off of. But I am concerned with legendaries. I know we just talked about that, but I really am concerned with that particular quality and that rarity in terms of gear. If all they give are increased baseline stats, then people aren't going to be happy. People want exciting and unique abilities they can build around or something that sets that named item apart from every other piece of gear in the game. And if they can't expand creatively on that, then I don't see high-end gear being the thing that keeps people playing. So they better either really build up their gameplay systems and that better be the fun in the game. But then again, you have to reward those people properly or they really need to take a step back and reapproach this. Now we're all basing this off of one legendary they showed us, but based off of that one legendary, things aren't looking so great. In terms of everything else, I think it's fine. I mean, I like the rarity system. I like the effects that are on some of the lower quality pieces of gear. I think those fit and those suit the commons, the uncommons, things like that. So I wanna hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Is this a gear system you could get behind? Is this something you think will keep you playing? Does it look interesting to you? Am I just being overly critical? I wanna hear from you guys. So let's get talking in the comment section below. But as always, thank you guys so much for the support. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.